Okay, the idea here is to take some incoming streams of audio and to apply envelopes to them in order to create a beat. The envelopes are going to be controlled by a step sequencer. And so it should be possible to take drones, to take um, basically any kind of incoming audio signal and to use a, um, a step sequencer to, to get a beat out of it. It's going to be a beat patcher. So we're going to use inlets to bring the incoming streams of audio in. We're going to use a multiply tilde signal to apply the envelope by multiplying the incoming stream of audio by another signal. And we're going to send the audio out of some outlets. Because the um, envelopes might have sudden transitions between values, we can use a ramp smooth object, which will give us control over whether or not that creates clicking. And in order to be able to control the level of smoothing that's applied to the um, signal, uh, to the envelope using the ramp smooth object, we can um, basically use some sends and receives to be able to control all five um, streams of audio at the same time. Might make more sense to call this ramp up and ramp down. Basically, these two arguments to the ramp smooth object are the amount of time in milliseconds that the um, uh, that the ramp takes to transition between signal values. So it basically avoids sudden kind of clicks. I'm going to receive the envelope. Um, to apply to this signal from somewhere else in the patch. So I'll use a receive tilde object to get that. And so basically this um, little setup can be duplicated five times. To keep things a bit neater, I'm going to encapsulate um, that setup. And I'm going to have to remember to go back in there to change the names of the receives. Okay, so that will handle our signal flow in and out of the patch. We now need to create the envelopes to apply to those signals. We can use the function object to generate the envelopes. And the line tilde object to, to translate the data that's created through the the function object, which basically is just a graph that you can use to draw an envelope, that will spit out a um, from the second outlet. It will put out um, a bunch of messages which work with line objects. So by using a line tilde, we're creating a um, an envelope signal, which we can then multiply by each of these streams of audio in order to create our beats. Going to check that that actually corresponds. So if I multiply this, duplicate this a few times, these will be our envelopes. To be able to control the length and um, scale of these envelopes, we can use some messages sent to the function object. So set domain will change the um, the x-axis will change the so effectively will change the length of the envelope. If we connect an integer box to set domain with the dollar one argument, 
then that dollar one argument will be replaced by this value. And we might want to load that with a reasonable starting value, maybe 200 milliseconds. The set range message takes two arguments and they basically control the, the maximum and minimum, minimum values on the y-axis. Um, so that will be useful for us because we can either apply the envelope to the incoming signal um, between the values of naught and 1, which will mean that the incoming sound will be completely cut, up, cut out um, except for when an envelope is being applied. That will properly turn it into, um, into a beat. But we might not want to imply that in quite such an extreme way, and we might want to just um, attenuate the sound slightly um, between envelopes. Um, to create a more subtle beat effect within a kind of um, whatever noise it is that we've got coming in. So using two floating point number boxes and a pack, a pack with a K basically means that adjusting either of the values will send out the results. Whereas pack with a CK um, only the left inlet will, will actually send out results. So again, we can send this to all of the five function objects. Um, again, initiating it with a, a value that makes sense um, will probably be helpful further down the line. So this is the envelopes um, in place, which will be applied to the signals coming in. Now we just need to sort out the step sequencer. So this will just be a completely standard method of creating a step sequencer using matrix control. I'm going to change the number of columns to 16 and the number of rows to 6. Those the first row I'm basically going to use as an indicator. Um, so the tempo object will allow us to send out numbers. The final argument there, um, 16, basically is the number that it's going to count to. It's going to send out numbers between 0 and 15, which we'll be able to use to get values from the matrix control object. So using the get column message with the dollar one argument, the matrix control will basically spit out the values that we've um, set. We can use an unpack object down at the bottom. to separate out the um, these buttons into ones and zeros, which we can use to trigger our envelopes. To actually trigger them, we can use cell objects. Cell one means that whenever a one is output from one of these outlets, it's going to output a bang, and we can send that bang to our envelopes to initiate the function objects.
So those the the bottom five rows on this matrix control will be our drum machine basically. And the top row we'll use as an indicator light. Um this is a trick that I found once upon a time on the um Max forums. Uh, it's really handy. So basically we can use a a pack object which will send out the number of the um, the number between naught and fifteen coming from the tempo, and then it will basically turn on the one of the values in the top row, so we can see what happens there. We then need to basically turn off the preceding um, button. In order to do that, we can use a another pack object also sending out an integer value. Zero, zero basically corresponds to um, that position in the matrix control object. But we need to get the, the, the previous number, basically. We can use an integer box to store that previous number. And a trigger to, to first send out um, the previous value and then to store the new one. And so this should now work, but it's not working. Why is it not working? It's not working because I've connected it to the toggle instead of connecting it to the tempo object. And so basically the bottom right inlet, the second outlet of the matrix control, sorry, is sending out this series of ones and zeros which correspond to the these buttons on the matrix control object. We may want to clear those when we're using this device. Okay, so having sent all of the um, the bangs created by these cell objects over to the envelopes, we need to actually pick up those um, signals now. So I've called them trig1, trig2. So in my mind that stands for trigger. For this to be usable, we're definitely going to want to use presentation mode. Um, so, oh, there's one thing we haven't done. So to control these ramp up and ramp down values, we need to create a, um, a couple of integer boxes and connect those to some sim, to some send objects. On what I called the receives now, ramp up and ramp down. And again, we want to initiate those with sensible value. So now this is just a matter of um, finding all of the things that we actually want to control, adding them to the presentation mode, and then creating a, um, a kind of usable interface for the device. 
So we want to be able to turn it on and off. We want to be able to actually create the beat. We want to be able to con control the five envelopes. Control the smoothness of the, um, the, the ramp smooth object. And change the parameters of the function objects, basically changing the parameters of the envelopes that we're applying. Um, in order to be able to remember what they are, it would be good to label them properly. So the set domain is changing the length of the envelope and the, uh, the set range. Our message is basically going to control the um, I guess kind of the amplitude of the envelope, the extent to which it, um, I'll call it amplitude. Okay, so to, you, to actually use a bpatch, you've got to save it as a file and then create a new, um, a new patcher. In the inspector for a bpatcher object, you can then find. I save this on my desktop. So find the file that you've created, and then it should load in the bpatcher object. Um, to get it to load in presentation mode, you need to go to the inspector, um, the patcher inspector for the original patch. And one of the values is open in presentation. So if I now resave the device, it should open in presentation mode. It has done. What we haven't done is yet actually make the presentation mode usable in any way by rearranging these objects. Okay, so I've managed to squeeze everything into a kind of rectangle in presentation mode. If I now save this patch, then it should reload in the new patch I created within the B patcher. And we can just test this out. So just use a couple of oscillators to see what it sounds like. Okay, so we've now hooked up um, five oscillators which are just producing a kind of sine tone into the five inlets, connected the five outlets to a gain control and to an easy DAC object. We should now be able to get some sound out of it. Right, that wasn't working because I had um, all of the envelopes being sent to the same receive object. edit those, save it, let's see what it's sounding like now. That's a bit better. And so changing the length value changes the envelope that's being applied to the incoming sound. These function objects are creating an envelope which allow us to kind of give a shape to the um, to the beat that we're producing and for example they could allow us to give a, a bit of a sustain or a decay to some of the sounds and if we adjust the um, the values that I've called amplitude here but which are changing the um, the range of the function objects then basically we can control the extent to which the signal is attenuated between beats. Okay, um, in another video I'll use this, um, make a few adjustments to this in order to make it more useful 
um, for a performance and then make a piece of music out of it. <laughs>